Um, uh, you have a documentary coming out later this year about you. Yeah, your, which is your weird. Life. Um, <laughs> all these people, such as yourself, who grew up watching me, I've become friends with throughout the years. Mm. And you called me, and we started this friendship. And um, this guy by the name of Josh Yon, who I met when he was maybe 14 years old, and uh, Matt Clickstein wanted to do a documentary on the one-man show. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, uh, who cares about that? And they kept coming back and kept coming back, and I finally said yes. And I am thrilled that I did, because two people who have never done a movie in their lives did one heck of a cool job. It will be released in October. And uh, it's um, what it was like to be behind the scenes with an old guy who wants to do theater who can't remember his lines. Uh, and and uh, just the, the pomp and circumstance that it takes to put a show like that on. We rehearsed it for about four weeks and then did it for three weeks. And it was probably the hardest thing I've ever done and one of the most frightening things I've ever done, but they captured it very nicely. Nice. And there's some pretty heavy stuff in there. I mean, we talked about your, your cancer uh, battle, but mm -hmm. there's also the battle with OCD that you, you've been talking about for years. Yep. Even though I've read the interviews and I've seen the interviews uh, leading up to this, um, I had no idea how severe that struggle was mm -hmm. until I saw some of the clips from the film. And it, it was tough to do every night. I, I would break down crying at different places in the show every night because um, going back and reliving it is mm. kind of tough. And I, I really didn't know much about performance as an actor, uh, although I was playing myself. And my goal, I said, was to, if I could make one person cry in the three weeks we did it in Bloomington first time, I felt I would have done a good job. Well, the first night, the audience was bawling their eyes out, and you got standing ovations, and it's like, holy cow, what just happened here? Wow. And so it was an emotional, my wife, I wouldn't let her even read the show, and she came the last weekend we performed it, and she broke down and cried because she didn't realize how difficult it was. So, yeah, it's it's quite an emotional thing, and why I did it, I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, I did it, and it's done, and uh, and I hope the documentary gets seen by a lot of folks. It's fun. Well, we have a clip from the documentary. This is uh, from On Your Mark. It's talking about some of those uh, health struggles, and uh, again, this is coming out in October. Take a look. A clip from On Your Mark. Mm. What he said to me years later was it was such good TV, I didn't care. I defy anybody to ever look at an episode and say I was not having a good time. Yeah! I didn't talk about having cancer nationally because in show business it can ruin your career. He's had these weird and wild chapters. He seems like a kind of unstoppable dude. Highlighting his life in this theater performance is probably one of the bravest, most giving things somebody could do. I think there's a lot to learn, a lot to love, a lot to share a lot to experience, but the life of Mark Summers, well, it should be a ride in an amusement park because it's got every twist and turn you can imagine. It was nice because Guy Fieri and I have been friends for 10 years, Neil Patrick Harris and I have uh, been friends for many years, and uh, Ryan Seacrest is in it as well. I met him when he was 19 years old and hmm. hired him to do a show that I was producing called uh, Ultimate Revenge. And we've known each other for many, many years, and they were all nice enough to go on and, and talk about what it was uh, that uh, we were able to do to help each other in our careers. And so um, it's nice to, when people pay back and, yeah. and promote talent such as yourself. Uh, Are you saying I owe you money? Because I <laughs> just want to oh, be Oh, you clear. owe me a ton, pal. I do. I owe you so much money. I ain't got that kind of dough. No, it's, it's fun because I once saw uh, Bob Hope on the Merv Griffin show. And Merv said to him, I, I don't even know if any of you remember who Merv Griffin is, but... Uh, of course, yeah, he's great. And he said to Bob Hope, if you could point to one person that made you a success, who would it be? And he said, and he said, nobody was there to help him. And he always thought at some point he would like to help others. And I always thought the same thing, that I was lucky enough to make it if somebody was nice enough. The internet didn't exist when I started in the, in the <laughs> industry, but, you know, people started contacting me. And, uh, and that's how some cool relationships have, have happened. So on the 500th show, I expect you to call me and bring me back for that. No, I'll be calling you about the 435th show first. <laughs> and then, um